Thinking about switching from Mac OS to Windows? Are you just curious about what it's like on the other side? Well, I've been having a play with Windows 11 and I've got some thoughts. Hello and welcome back to Marketless Reviews and thank you for subscribing if you have. And if you haven't subscribed, the button is just down there. Or there, I still don't know which side. Back in August this year, I bought this, the Microsoft Surface Laptop 4. It's great, and if you're a Mac kind of person and you need a Windows laptop for whatever reason, it's actually quite a good alternative to the M1 MacBook Air. Now, I have made a video where I compare the MacBook Air against this Surface Laptop 4. I'll link to that above. But using this Surface Laptop 4 has been fascinating, particularly when it comes to Windows 11. So if you either need to move to Windows for work purposes or you're just curious to see what it's like going from Mac OS to Windows, this is what I've discovered. When it comes to setting Windows up, it's really easy. Just like Mac OS, you turn the computer on and you just go through a guided setup process. I think the likes of Apple and Microsoft have really worked hard to refine the setup process for their devices. So basically, nothing to worry about. If you're going from Mac OS to Windows and you're a little bit worried about the setup process, it's really straightforward. However, what made it even more straightforward for me was 1Password, and I'm delighted to say that 1Password are sponsoring this video. Now, a couple of months ago, I transferred from Apple Keychain to 1Password, and it's just been a fantastic move. And one of the biggest benefits is that 1Password is cross-platform, which means I can get all of my login details, passwords, etc., on this Windows laptop. And one of the main things I love about 1Password is that it isn't just for passwords. You can put notes in there, your passport details, software licenses, basically anything you want to keep secure, stick it in 1Password. And what's been really cool with 1Password 8 on Windows, which was released fairly recently, is that they've introduced something which makes this feel like a Mac. And that something is called Quick Access. And with Quick Access, you press Control, Shift and Space, and it gives you a very familiar looking search bar in the middle of the screen. In fact, it's spookily like Spotlight on Mac OS, and it just made me feel a little bit more at home, along with enabling me to find things much quicker. So thanks again to 1Password for sponsoring this video, very much appreciated. I've put a link in the description if you wanna go and check it out for yourself. So what's it like using Windows when you're so used to Mac OS? Now there's no doubting that they're very different operating systems, but they do share a lot of the same heritage and a lot of the same approaches to computing. So they both feature Windows for apps and folders. They both offer multitasking capabilities and they both have a taskbar, sort of. But it's usually the route that you have to take to achieve a certain task or do a certain thing that separates these two operating systems. And it can catch you out, and it catches me out quite regularly. Take Alt-Tabbing, for instance. Now, if you don't know, Alt-Tab is where you hold down your Alt key and press the Tab key to cycle through the different programs that you have open on the computer. I think, don't quote me on this, that Windows got there first. But Alt-Tabbing on Windows can catch you out if you have the Edge browser open with several tabs open. So let's say you have three or four apps open, and one of those is Edge, and you've got three web websites open in tabs. If you alt tab in that instance, Windows actually alt tabs through the tabs within Edge as well, which is a little bit confusing at first. Working with split screen apps is very different in Mac OS and Windows as well. For instance, on Windows 11, there's this fantastic thing where you can snap an app to the left or right hand side of the screen. You just click it, drag it, and it will snap in place. And that then enables you obviously to snap another app to the right hand side or left hand side. I find that really intuitive, whereas on Mac OS, you have to long press on the little green maximize thing and then choose which side of the screen you want the app to be on and then you get to choose the second one. It's just a bit long-winded and like a lot of things multitasking wise the iPad is the same. It just feels like Apple makes a bit of a ham-fisted effort of this. And then there's tiny things which catch me out. For instance on Windows you can maximize any window any folder by double clicking on the bar at the top. I remember doing that when I was a proper Windows user many many years ago. Whereas on Mac OS it seems to be a little bit inconsistent. So on certain apps it will behave in the same way as Windows. You double click the top bar and it will maximize that window. But on Finder for instance if you do the same thing it just kind of makes it taller. It's really strange. But those little niggles aside, everything else is very similar. So finding what you need is pretty easy on both Windows or Mac OS, although Spotlight on Mac OS is a bit of a highlight. You can search for things inside the Start menu on Windows 11, but I do think the Start menu appears to be playing much less of a role these days. 
The Windows 11 start menu is much tidier than that cluttered mess that was Windows 10, but I still never really find myself needing to go into it. And I think the fact there's no equivalent on macOS reveals that the start menu is a bit of a relic, really, when it comes to Windows. Indeed, on Windows 11, you'll notice that the icons on the start bar have moved to the center of the screen, which looks spookily like macOS's dock. You can move them to the left if you want to, but I've left them where they are because it just looks a little bit familiar for me. But apart from that, as I say, using macOS, using Windows, it's very similar. However, if you're coming from macOS, there will be a few things you'll miss out on. So what will you miss from macOS if you start using Windows 11? One of the biggest things is the macOS ecosystem. And if you own devices like this, like the iPhone or an iPad, and you use them regularly throughout the day, and more importantly, you use them in a way that connects with your Mac, you're gonna miss those features if you start using a Windows laptop. There's a few reasons for this, but one of the main things from my perspective was handoff. And handoff is this brilliant thing where you can very easily transfer stuff from your iPhone, for instance, to your Mac. I talked about this recently in a video that I did about Safari, which I'll link to above. But in essence, if for instance, you've got a web page open on your iPhone, with a couple of clicks, you can just send that web page to your Mac. Same thing with copying and pasting text. You can copy text on here and paste it onto your Mac, vice versa, completely wirelessly. I quite often transfer files from things like my iPads and my iPhones to the Mac. And then there's the Apple Watch, which you can set up to unlock your Mac if you don't have a Mac with Touch ID. You just switch the feature on, and then as long as you've got your Apple Watch on, walk up to your Mac, it will unlock magically. Not magically, but yeah. Now there is an iCloud app for Windows, but all it does is give you a folder or a shortcut to your iCloud drive and another folder for your iCloud photos. So in theory, you can still transfer files and photos from your phone to your Windows laptop. It's just a bit more long-winded. So if you're a heavy Apple ecosystem user or trapped prisoner, as it's known, then you will miss that stuff if you start using Windows more regularly. It's also worth doing a bit of research on the apps that you use on a daily basis, whether it be for personal reasons or for your business. Now I found one app that is not compatible or not available even on Windows, which is Ulysses. And Ulysses is this fantastic writing app that I run all of my blogging from. It's just such an important part of this business, but it's not available on Windows. Now that's not this laptop's fault at all, it's not Microsoft's fault. For whatever reason, the people behind Ulysses have decided not to develop at the moment for Windows. And I can't find anything that comes close because I'm quite annoying and have a very long list of reasons that it needs to be exactly like Ulysses. So just do a bit of research on that. The other two examples for me are Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro. I use both of those to run this channel in terms of audio and video production. And yet, of course, there's loads of alternatives on Windows for those, but I'd have to learn completely new workflows. And then there's some of the smaller stuff. And one of the biggest small things for me that I miss from macOS when using Windows is the ability to preview pretty much any type of file by hitting the spacebar. So if you're not aware, on macOS, if you just click once on a PDF file, for example, and press your spacebar, macOS will give you a preview of that file. And you can do it with pretty much any type of file. Now, I've never counted how many times I do that throughout the day because I have friends, but I can guarantee it's a lot. And I still find myself, when I'm using this Windows laptop, hitting space to try and preview files, and it's always annoying when it doesn't do it. The other thing I miss to a degree is the macOS dock. Now the dock isn't anything special, it's just a list of the apps you want quick access to, but that's kind of why it's so useful. And on Windows, even though in Windows 11 they've made it look a little bit more like the dock, it just behaves in a different way. So I, I'm always getting lost as to what apps are open at the moment, which ones are pinned, which ones aren't pinned. I would get used to it if I was using this constantly, but just switching between the two platforms, the dock just feels a little bit simpler and a little bit easier to use. But if I analyze this, the only reason I miss those things is because I've been a heavy macOS user for many years. But there's no massive deal breakers in there, which means if I had to use this Windows laptop now for the rest of my life, I'd get over those things. Now, some people seem to enjoy poking fun at certain web browsers. I've never quite understood that because they're web browsers. For instance, I use Safari. I love it, no problem with it whatsoever. I occasionally use Chrome, but only for very specific reasons. But I'd never used Microsoft Edge, and it's fantastic. It's worth noting that you can get it on the Mac as well. Now, if you know me, you know I don't do any kind of tests, so I haven't tested the speed of Safari versus Chrome versus Edge, but Edge does seem to be pretty quick. But I think it's just the approach to design that Microsoft has taken with Edge that makes it such a pleasing browser to use. And this is particularly the case with the way that Safari has developed on macOS Monterey. The tab view is quite a good example of this. When you start using a browser like Microsoft Edge, and previously you were using macOS Monterey and Safari, you realize how much 
much of a mess Apple is making of tabs. I can get by with it on Safari, but there's no doubting that Edge just does a much better job of user interface design. I mentioned earlier that you can alt tab between tabs in Edge, which is actually quite useful. You can pin tabs like you can in Safari. There's a feature called collections, which is a little bit like tab groups. You can basically create a list of specific websites, but you can do things like add notes to them, which is quite nice. Edge just feels uncluttered, well-designed, fast, and more importantly, incredibly easy to use, which is what a web browser should be. I think Safari really could and should take some cues from Microsoft Edge. I've really been really enjoying my time with this Surface Laptop 4 and Windows 11. I don't use it all the time, I use it occasionally, but I do find it quite refreshing to go from macOS to Windows. And I think as I've hopefully demonstrated today, if you are in that position where you need to move to Windows or you just want to move to Windows for a bit, it's not that different to macOS. But I'm curious, have you done this? And did you find the transition from macOS to Windows easy, hard, frustrating, enjoyable? Let me know in the comments. Now, if you've still got some time and you fancy getting back into the world of Mac OS, then keep watching for my recent review of the 16-inch MacBook Pro. But until next time, guys, thank you for watching as always, and I'll catch you next time.